hi before you start i know <laughs> uh well first hello hi i'm kendall if you're new around here welcome not new around here what is up home scale biscuit happy saturday if you don't know what saturday is this when i do something on my channel called bad movies and beat the series on my channel where i talk about bad movies do i put my makeup on but <gasps> i already have my makeup on and y'all hate when i do this but i have an excuse i was asleep <laughs> i didn't say it was a good excuse but <laughs> i was asleep so hard today. One of those, like, I woke up and didn't know if I was alive <laughs> or not type of sleep. So I was like, what day is it? I recently uh, got some ADHD medication and I think I shouldn't be taking it in the daytime because if I take it, I'm out for at least four hours, baby. It's good sleep though. <laughs> I say all that to say I've done my makeup already because this video is being recorded late. Y'all know what it is. It always gets done though. You always get a video. Demisexual flag today. For those of you that haven't noticed over the past month, I've been doing my makeup in the color of pride flags. I am going to make myself put the products though in the description box. Cause often when I do my makeup already, I forget to put things in the description box. Cause I'm usually just around with stuff. But this time I made sure I wrote it down. It will be in the description box if you are interested and check that out down below. Oh, another thing you could check out in the description box is this ad you bought to watch. Hello everyone, this is at Royal Kenny and today's video is sponsored by Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online grocery store that allows you to buy healthy and unique foods at affordable prices. As a Thrive member, you are able to get exclusive savings on every order. Most members find that they make their annual membership price back within two orders. As far as like savings, I save nearly $30. So you've already made your money back by the second shipment a lot of times. It's easy to search on there for products that fit your particular diet, whether you have certain allergies, if you're gluten-free, if you're vegan, keto. It's easy to search and customize everything on the website for that. But me personally, I just like to eat. <laughs> and I love an interesting snack. So my favorite part is just looking for unique, weird stuff. Like I found cauliflower, cheddar crackers they were funky not not in a bad way but like in a cheese way but also in that farty way <laughs> that cauliflower is good but i really like the coconut milk caramels big fan of their plantain chips i've already eaten a bag of those those are fire and also just getting staple things that can be incredibly expensive in a regular grocery store things like honey date syrup have you ever seen how much date syrup can cost thrive just makes getting your groceries that much cheaper that much more convenient it's delivered to you another way that i can avoid going to a traditional grocery store it's overwhelming i'm not a fan they guarantee a price that's cheaper than anywhere else and if you find it cheaper they will match it so if you would like to check out Thrive Market, feel free to check them out down in the description box. Go to thrivemarket.com slash KennyJD and you'll get 30% off your first order and a free gift worth up to $60. I love free stuff. Big thanks again to Thrive Market for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. Hey guys, hey, look what came in the mail. <laughs> Oh, it's the exact same case. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, check out my um, Pastor Thorn video that I did like a month ago. The case, I wasn't joking, I bought it. Holy shit, it's just as I remembered. It's a lot going on, but if you know, you know. <laughs> Last week we talked about My Fake Boyfriend, a movie that is incredibly bad, but also so good. <laughs> it's kitschy and campy and corny and gay, and I liked it. It's another corny movie that Dylan Sprouse is in. Uh, he's been really a friend to the channel recently, hasn't he? He's been making some garbage that I always want to watch. So keep up the good work, Dylan. You'll always be here in my heart. <laughs> so if you wanna check out that video, that'll be linked up above, or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. So this week, I am going to talk about a gay indie classic, um, a movie that is often touted as the worst gay movie ever made. And whenever somebody's making a list of the worst movies ever made, I'm gonna see it. Again, happy pride. Oh, donate to For the Girls in the description box as well. And this movie has long been compared to masterpieces such as The Room or maybe something from our Lord and Savior, Neil Breen. Um, his words, not mine. <laughs> Who follows me on Twitter, by the way. Hate if you want to, when's the last time a deity followed you on social media? But honestly, I think it's really unfair to compare those movies because this preceded those. It was before it's time, apparently. Today we're talking about Ben and Arthur. It's an independent drama that came out in 2002 about the rightful frustrations of a gay man in America that simply wants to marry his partner and live a happy life, but the world is homophobic and cold and simply won't mind their own business. 
very valid complaints to have. It's one of those movies where the director is the main character, who's the writer, who's the editor. <laughs> so you know it's gonna be great. <laughs> it's made by Sam, is the M silent? Rockovich? Probably pronounced that wrong, I'm so sorry. And again, this movie was pitched to me as like something Neil Breen-esque, but gay. So I of course wanted to watch it. This is one of my favorite types of film, which is horrible movies that are so sincere. <laughs> They mean it, they're trying, they believe in themselves, but they just don't have the skill to really articulate that very well. And so it exists in this beautiful uncanny valley that all of us can enjoy for years to come. It is about the frustrations and the injustices that gay people faced in the early 2000s, but because the movie is so comedically bad, <laughs> it becomes a campy cluster despite its sincerity. Hence, we're here. Hopefully I'm introducing you to it because you gotta see it if you've never seen it. Oh my God, it's fantastic. Uh, it's definitely something that should be talked about in canon with like Fateful Findings, uh, Twisted Pair, Neil Breen uh, movies along with The Room, you know, Tommy Wiseau, Wiseau, or however you pronounce that. It's very similar in that it's very sincere and also filmed on a tin can. The movies, obviously very low budget. The set is made of cardboard. <laughs> and miscellaneous mattresses in the living room, confusing props and even more confusing sound effects. Despite this being a passion project, it looks like nobody wants to be there. And and I love it. I unironically think this movie is amazing. <laughs> someone uploaded it on YouTube. So if you would like to watch it and enjoy it before someone ruins the fun and the movie is taken down, this has been an Arthur. 2002. If you see water streaks on my face, I wasn't crying. I My eyes are incredibly dry. These are a new pair of contacts and I didn't soak them. Don't do that. So the movie begins uh, in the most confusing way possible, which really sets you up for your viewing experience here. The entertainer playing? Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the song, The Entertainer, you're not uh, most likely if you're an American because it's the ice cream truck song. <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to be symbolic of something or if it's just royalty free, <laughs> I imagine, but quite a jaunty tune considering we're about to, you know, watch a hard hitting drama. <laughs> we see one of our main characters, Arthur. I would argue that he's the main, like the general main character. Uh, this is also Sam Rockovich. He's asleep at his home and his boyfriend, Ben, calls him, urging him to hurry up and turn on the radio because they've made an announcement, but this is our first, foyer into the style of acting or the skill level of acting we're going to see. Ben, I'm losing you. I think your cell phone's dying. Arthur, 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 my battery's low. I'm losing you. Just assume for the entire viewing experience that if anything's taking place, it will happen in the most unnatural way possible. Hey, not soaking the contacts was a very bad idea. <laughs> but the news that Ben is calling about is that Hawaii has just legalized gay marriage. And the couple is so overwhelmingly happy and filled with joy that they could go to Hawaii and be married. Of course, this is early 2000s, so this is prior th to gay marriage being legalized. This was a very real thing that a lot of gay couples were having to go to specific states to try to get married. So they pack, um, and in case you didn't know that, they made sure that they had a wonderful song to, to talk you through it. <laughs> But by the morning, their dreams of getting married in Hawaii have already been thwarted because the judge decided to put a stay on the decision, which would delay them being able to go to Hawaii to get married for at least two years. And they are crushed because again, they're being treated like second class citizens. They bought tickets to Hawaii that are non-refundable. I will say it's a bit strange that they didn't just go to Hawaii anyway, cause they don't, they just are very upset that they paid the money for the tickets. With that said, it's one of my favorite scenes. Uh, Arthur gives one of his best performances here. Us fucking another two years, Ben. This is ignorance and completely unfair. This country fucking sucks, it just fucking sucks. Oh. After this emotional outburst, Ben decides to tell Arthur that he has a secret. I need to tell you something. Huh. We've been together for three years. <laughs> he comes up to Arthur, he materializes in front of Arthur, and confesses that he has a wife that he married five years ago and is in the process of divorcing. Now, 
they've been together for three years and you were planning on flying to another state to be married. You didn't think, okay, sure, this, whatever. <laughs> I was about to really nitpick the shit movie. I'm gonna lose my mind. Arthur takes it, you know, well, better than I thought he would. Or at least he tells himself that via his diary. Dear diary, I can't believe Ben. He's married to some bitch named Tammy. I think I took it rather well. So Tammy, the ex-wife, soon to be ex-wife, whatever, uh, comes to the apartment. Again, I don't know why I'm asking stupid questions like this because this movie is fundamentally garbage, but I had so many questions. Like, where does she think he is? <laughs> does he does he come home some days? She's not confused that he has a whole other apartment. Is this the first time she's heard from him since he's been dating Arthur? Did she think he was dead? Like what? And, and the thing is, None of that is like addressed. There's no like pleasantries, no, oh my God, where have you been? No like, what are you doing living here or anything? Nothing, he just goes straight to, I want a divorce. Which again, I guess if he's been living here with someone else or just been gone for the last two, three years, you shouldn't be shocked by that. But she's like, what brought this on? I'm gay and I would like to marry my boyfriend. She says, no, you're just confused, no. We're gonna get married in Vermont. I don't know what happened to Hawaii. Is Vermont not a cheaper flight than, you could have gotten married before it got legalized in Hawaii then, I don't know, anyway. But she leaves angry, upset, um, so. Both Ben and Arthur seem to work at a restaurant or something. We only see them in there for like one scene, so I don't know. Ben has a degree in nursing, but quit and decided to focus on his music that we never see him play. <laughs> We never see him do anything to work on his music. We never see him sing. We never see him play a guitar. We never see him do shit. And Arthur says that he doesn't want to do this anymore, be at this restaurant. He hates the customers and everything. He wants to go back to college, get a business degree and open a porn shop. Uh, this is also somewhat of a storyline that we never come back to either. But after a bad run-in with a customer, that's Arthur's final straw, and he decides to quit that day, which again, some prime meme clippage in this movie. It's so great. Aren't you gonna give me my sugar? <laughs> no. <laughs> you better give me my sugar, I'll suddenly tell your boss on you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so now, unemployed, Arthur decides to go job hunting, um, and he finds that he's running into a lot of dead ends without a degree. He reaches his low point when he goes on a dance audition at a men's strip club with no music. Um. Now, uh, let's see your penis. So eventually he decides to suck up his pride and go to his estranged brother, Victor's house and ask for money. Victor is one of those Christians, the real weird ones. Because of that, they've been estranged for give or take seven years. And apparently seven years is long enough for them to not recognize each other. It's, it's me, your brother, Arthur. Oh, Arthur? I, I haven't seen you in what, at least seven years? Yeah, I barely recognize you. You guys are both like, what, 34? <laughs> you don't remember what he looked like seven years ago? Okay. But once inside, Victor does what we'd all garner he would do. He questions Arthur about whether or not he's been freed of his demons um, and accepted Lord and Jesus as his... Wait, Lord and Jesus? <laughs> whether or not he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. There you go. And Arthur's like, God, please don't start with the Jesus shit again. I'm just here to ask for money for school. And the brother is like, I will give you more than enough money if you and your partner come over and talk with some people from the church. Like have dinner, we can chat. And he's like, oh, f okay, sure, whatever. Later, someone sends a threatening letter to the couple at their home about them not getting married. Honestly, it could be anyone because everyone sucks, but I'm assuming that it's the brother. But this starts a conversation about how maybe Ben and Arthur should get some legal counsel because they can, you know, have someone back them as they try to, you know, get married because they're adults who should be able to marry another adult. <laughs> so they get legal counsel and she says that they should get married in Vermont. And then if California doesn't recognize it, then we'll take it to the Supreme Court. So they fly over to Vermont 
via FedEx plane <laughs> and get married in the palm trees of Vermont. <laughs> Once they get back to California, the lawyer tells them that their legal options look pretty good. So they're like feeling settled. They're feeling confident. Meanwhile, though, Victor hires a private investigator to follow his brother around when he doesn't answer his phone quick enough because I guess he fears that he's going somewhere out there to be gay married. He's made it his one duty to make sure that his brother doesn't marry a man. <laughs> the investigator who's like 19. <laughs> yeah, I quit my job at Blockbuster and became a PI. He's like, though I find what you're doing morally wrong, if you pay me $800 a day, I'll do it. So over the course of a few days, the PI is able to give the brother Victor some information about uh ben and arthur perhaps one of the things they found out is that they have gotten legal counsel to defend them if california doesn't recognize their marriage so victor thinks the only reasonable thing i can do is shoot their lawyer in her garage while like tech and tag tournament music plays in the background Eventually, Ben and Arthur do end up going to that dinner with Victor, again, not knowing that he murdered their lawyer. They don't even know their lawyer is murdered. And it's a very subtle situation in which they're trying to convince them to just stop uh, being gay. Please. I'm sure as soon as uh, Arthur gets a beautiful wife and children, then that's when he'll have a nice family. Is that correct, Arthur? Victor. I'm gay. This obviously starts an argument because what? And they leave, leaving Victor to believe he's going to have to use progressively more drastic measures, I guess, more so than killing their lawyer. <laughs> but since they left, they didn't get the money. So, but they have each other. So that's good. They cement that love with silhouetted coitus on screen. All's good for a bit until the ex-wife comes up again. Uh, this time with a gun. What is with everyone's first choice being? <laughs> no, nobody thought any other level of, uh, okay. Gun, she brings a gun <laughs> to the apartment to threaten Ben to stop with all this gay nonsense and come home and marry me again. And he's like, no, I'm, I've already married my husband. We're married, I'm gay, stop. And she's like, I will not accept this. I will shoot you. <laughs> and so they tussle. And eventually Ben is able to get the gun from her and send her on her way. Um, and she never comes back. I guess she takes this defeat as the final straw, but they do get a cool free gun. So. Uh -huh. And considering everybody around them seem to be either getting shot or a gun pulled out on them, I don't think it's a bad idea to keep it. And there's just a lot going wrong these days. They have the crazy ex-wife the crazy brother. They eventually find out that the lawyer did get shot. And now apparently someone has stolen Ben's bike from their garage. So this ends up boiling into an argument between Ben and Arthur where Arthur somehow starts yelling about how Ben was once in the closet. And then Arthur is like, if I end up getting killed and you get insurance money for my death, you can buy a hundred bikes. I don't know. I don't know how we got here. I don't know how we got to this conversation. Like there was no lead in at all. There was also no lead in to Ben's response to that. <laughs> well, you know, Ben, if I ever get killed, maybe you can take that insurance money and just go ahead and buy a hundred bikes. Oh. Okay, so, so, when, so when Arthur wakes up, after getting uh, punched in the face. Uh, when he wakes up, Ben is like, oh, I'm sorry, let's go on vacation to apologize for me punching you in the face. That's a wonderfully healthy relationship structure. Great. Meanwhile, Victor and his church friend are boiling a straight potion for Arthur. They tape it to his door and apparently they're supposed to drink it. I don't know. Would you drink from a random vial that was taped onto your door? Probably not. And Arthur finds it and is immediately like, yeah, I know my brother taped this on our door, his dumb like anti-gay potion or whatever the fuck <laughs> it throws it away. Eventually, Victor is called into the priest's office 
or whatever. It's the same apartment, but again, just like foam board on the walls and a crudely drawn photo of Jesus. And um, the priest is like, everybody in the congregation knows that your brother is gay, Victor, and that simply will not do. We cannot afford to have somebody tangentially gay (laughs) in our congregation. So we're gonna have to kick you out. The fear, I think, is that if your brother's gay, then you might have some gayness. The gay. (laughs) But it's lying dormant within you, and we don't want that influence on our children. (laughs) Obviously satire, but it's actually not that far off when you listen to homophobes talk. It's really wild, but okay. But yeah, they kick him out of the church. And this leads to Victor further losing his mind, and he's now on the road to revenge. He visits his church friend, tells him that I've been kicked out of the church because my brother, I'm gonna kill him. And apparently I want as many people to know this before I do it so that they'll let me back in the church. And the friend is like, yeah, I'm not uh, really cool with homosexuality either, but I, mm, I know this isn't right either. And then Victor goes back to the priest because again, he wants as many people as possible to know that he's taking material steps to murder somebody. And he tells the priest that I plan to murder my brother to save his soul. The priest is like, I wouldn't do that. But with, A shockingly small amount of convincing uh, Victor is able to bring the priest on board with the plan. He even offers to help. He offers to introduce him to a hitman. I don't know why he knows what, (laughs) Um, and he can help him with the job. Again, bringing as many people into this murder (laughs) plan as possible. So while all of this is going on, Ben and Arthur are on their post DV vacation by the pool somewhere that is obviously very close to their home, more of a staycation if anything. That is until Ben gets a call from the hospital that apparently he works at again. We've never seen him work at the hospital. We didn't know he started working back at the hospital. Also, what happened to that music you were supposedly doing? But he needs to go into the hospital because they're short staffed. So they have to cut their staycation, vacation, whatever, very short. So Victor ends up going to Ben and Arthur's apartment. Arthur answers the door and Victor goes on this whole monologue about how he's there to save his soul. He explains that you're the reason I got kicked out of the church. Do you know that they threw me out of the church, huh? Well, probably because you're some crazy psychotic fuck. I hired a private investigator and he found out that you're running a porno shop. Since when? (laughs) Thought he was getting his degree first. After telling Victor to go fuck himself literally, he gives him lube and a dildo to do it. Uh, He ends up kicking Victor out. Later, Arthur goes to the store, leaving Ben alone at the home. That is when the priest hitman and Victor come to the house and apparently attack Ben off screen. When Arthur arrives, he sees Ben knocked out on the floor and calls the ambulance immediately. And he is rushed off to the hospital still alive. After the attack, the police go and question Victor about Ben. And Victor's like, the only thing I know is that he's dead. Real smooth. (laughs) And the police is like, no. No, he's not dead. Uh, He's gonna make a full recovery actually, but we did want to talk to you about it. They also go talk to the priest about it. So there would seem to be some indication that they are on the track that they had something to do with it. They do ask the priest if Victor seems like he's the type of person that would be capable of violence. And the priest lies immediately and says, no, no, he's not that type of person. The police is like, well, his brother, Arthur seems to think so. And the priest essentially says in so many words, why would you believe him? He's a homosexual. (laughs) Arthur, in an effort to try to get some evidence that his brother had something to do with Ben getting attacked, goes to his house, bugs his phone, but he ends up getting caught by Victor when he comes back home. What the fuck are you doing? Why did he say it like that? I don't- Arthur's like, I want to know who you hired to do that to Ben, which I don't know why I assume that they hired somebody to do it, but whatever. And Victor is like, I'm not telling you shit. And then points a gun at him and telling Arthur, get the hell out of here. He also says something along the lines that this is the same gun that he used to kill uh, Arthur's gay friend when they were kids, which I just sprinkled that in. I see why y'all didn't talk to each other for a while. He's like, I should have killed you too, but I didn't have the heart. So get out now before I change my mind. Arthur leaves, but because he was successful in bugging the phone, he overhears Victor and the priest talking. Victor basically tells the priest like, hey, Arthur came over, he was threatening me. I'm kind of scared, honestly, because he seems very upset and he seems to know I had something to do with Ben getting attacked. The priest is like, 
if you need a safe haven, you can come over my house, like if you're afraid. So now Arthur is very well aware that the priest also had something to do with this. So what does he do? He goes over to the church, quote unquote, the the foam board, chloroforms the priest with a (laughs) nail polish remover and then pours gasoline on him uh, (laughs) and lights him on fire. After returning to the apartment, Arthur gets a call from the hospital that Ben will be released soon. So he goes to get Ben. But right when Ben is starting to feel like he can move a little bit, he's starting to get better. Here comes hating ass Victor to the door and shoots Ben again. Heartbroken and vertigo ridden, uh, Arthur cries over Ben's dead body. And now we enter into the final act. Arthur has lost the love of his life, Ben targeted by his homophobic brother. He's lost everything. His brother attacks him, forces him to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and savior, baptizes him, strips him naked, humiliates him. And you know, this was supposed to be that like gritty indie scene, you know? I could tell he was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be so impactful, but it's shit. (laughs) After all of that stress, he eventually just snaps, losing his mind, so broken mentally that Arthur gets up, puts back on his underwear and like a like a button up shirt, gets the gun that Ben had that he got from the ex-wife that came to try to shoot him and tries to, seduce his brother. Arthur had garnered that uh, Victor's obsession with his homosexuality was because he had his own closeted urges. I don't, Okay, um, I don't know why this needed to be added. I just, I don't know. But um, Arthur shoots him in the shoulder and then uh, Victor shoots him in the back several times. But with his last breath, he's able to get a shot at Victor. That's the end, they all die. I've never seen a work so powerful in so few words, in so little (laughs) storyline. It's a gritty, um, heart stopping drama. So few, um, movies have been able to come anywhere close. And so if you haven't seen this masterpiece, I highly recommend it. All jokes aside, it's a, a, an erotic piece of shit and I love it. (laughs) And I think you should watch it. If you have ever asked yourself whether or not you like garbage, um, trust me, you do. And you'd love to behold this just, just to see it in all its glory. Again, I saw it on YouTube for free. Again, watch it before they take it down because greatness can only be be seen for free for so long, you know? And that's all for today, folks. My eyes still hurt. So if you've noticed me like doing like this or looking really high, it's because my contacts are incredibly dry and I can't keep my eyes open. It's always something, isn't it? (laughs) Anyway, if you like this video, feel free to like this video, comment, if there's any other movies that you think I should watch, particularly bad ones, because I love garbage. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, both of which are Kenny GD. Is there anything else? 